Uh, welcome. My name is Psycho Break. Along with Tojo. And we are discussing Heels, which is um, on episode five. And it is, the name of this one is Swerve. Swerve is the word. Let us know that you watched the video all the way through by typing it in at the comments. Now, as we get going here, we're basically trying some new stuff and trying to get better on our equipment. Um, and, of course, this is basically me and Derek doing 50-50 worth stuff, so I definitely will help him back on everything, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, first and foremost, let's talk about what an episode. Yes, this episode honestly made me have more hope for the series as a whole. This is the episode to me that actually grounds it because in earlier episodes, it was either more about the wrestling and less about the life outside of wrestling or more about the life outside of wrestling and less about the wrestling in general. So it made it kind of 50-50 on that, but now it's starting to get to where everything's bleeding in together. Art is imitating life. Life is imitating Don't art. Don't get ahead of yourself, man, on this. Because, because I'm using you're this like, okay. as an example okay. for the but, way it is. All right. Well, okay. Well, that being said, we'll go a little bit more into that here in a bit. Uh, when what he's talking about, a lot of the times Tojo has a tendency to do an overview and then say the same thing about three or four times. So we don't want to do an overview just yet. But uh, the what what was one of your favorite spots in the in the show? Without killing what we're going to talk about, I guess. Honestly, so I would say the way that Crystal went off script. Yeah. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, with Crystal going off script, I'm thinking hopefully maybe this will lead up and build up to her helping the new girl and maybe having a women's match. Yes, which but I'm we, hoping to But see. we probably won't see that until season two, if we're going to be real. Right probably now, not. Right now, this season's more focused on Wild Bill and this other promotion that's slowly but surely bleeding their way into the scenes and stuff. Uh, but you don't really see nothing about that. So let's go ahead and do a rundown about what the uh, episode was. Hills episode five, Swerve. We'll get into what the Swerve was in a bit. But Tojo, go ahead and uh, start it off here, and then I'll pick up, and then we'll swap back and forth. Well, I think this episode it actually started off kind of tame compared to some of the previous episodes where it's, Basically, Jack running with Wild Bill coming out saying in his car saying that that's going to ruin his knees, ruin his back. No, no, this is after Wild Bill saying he's going to go to rehab because of the incident in the former episode. Yeah, and the former episode was, uh, what was that? That was uh, cutting promos? Yeah, cutting promos. Cutting promos. Yeah, Wild, Wild Bill is pretty much the wild card right now. Like, he, he, in a way, I wouldn't say he's a necessary evil because he's not really evil. It's like, even though the son doesn't look at him the way he does, you know, like him the way he does, you could tell that Wild Bill and his dad were actually a lot closer than what Jack, really, Jack and Ace understand. Yes. And he's kind of watching over them in a way. And we'll get into more about that here in a bit. Um, like Tojo said, it was slow paced a little bit, but by the time you knew it, you had after credits. I mean, it, it, it was good. Like you got into it. Yeah. Um, I think that's what they did good with this episode was starting it out kind of slow, just making it just build and build and build to a good climax towards the end. But if you're getting into it though, and you're watching it, it's going to go by fast anyways, whether the other episodes we watched, I'm not going to lie, felt like we was pulling teeth. Some of the other episodes, I mean, these are all about, what, 54 minutes or so? Yeah, this was, yeah, this was 54, yeah. Some of the other episodes, it felt like they were about an hour and a half, like a freaking movie or something. But this episode, it felt like it was just a little 30-minute TV show. Yeah, and it actually sits at 56 minutes, so that tells you something. When this starts off, it starts off where uh, Crystal's in the ring doing her speech, and while she's doing her speech, you hear... Uh, cheering and 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 booing and all this other stuff that's piped in. Yeah, that's piped in. I was going to get to that, but yeah, it's piped in. 
and she has a steel cage around her. Not the steel cage that we know as today, but the steel cage that they had back in the old school era. Yeah, like kind of like the old blue steel cages. Yeah. And uh, after she gets done with her reading and stuff, of course, they go backstage and they do their little, uh, what was it? They do their little, um, I guess, what Jack thought of the... Yeah, they basically, Jack talks with them. He's getting ready to uh, talk to the people that's over the State Fair Commission. And DWL is actually trying to be part of the Georgia State Fair so they'd be able to have more eyeballs on their product because there's supposed to be, I believe, 10,000 people there in attendance. Yeah. And compared to a local indie promotion where you probably only have maybe 1,000 at most in full capacity, you're having 10,000 people. That is a big step up. Yeah, it's a very big step up. And, and you can understand how crucial this is, but at what cost will Jack get this? That's the big question, and you kind of... Yeah. That's been the question throughout the entire series is what will the cost be for Jack with as much as his family is putting in, not only with the business, but with what all's going on in their regular life, what cost is it for him? Yeah, and uh, the one of the other things that happens is basically uh, you have where the wife starts her job at the grocery store and Wild Bill pretty much is, I guess in a way, what, harassing her in a way? Well, the way it, the scene shows is he drops a jar of pickles and he apologizes saying that it is because of his arthritis. And once he sees her, knows who, he, knows, knows who it is. Then he starts kind of harassing her, talking about how Jack and Ace's daddy Tom was, and Jack and Ace are nothing like their daddy was. And pretty much to the point that he's actually, he knows how to push her buttons. Like, he actually gets her to drop the F-bomb on him quite a few times. And this is supposed to be a church-going wife and all this other stuff that sings in the choir, which that was, I mean, that wasn't shocking, but it just shows you how Wild Bill's the type of person that could actually bring it out of you. Like, he could push the buttons. Um, one of the things we go over too is, uh, in the meanwhile, you got Wild Bill trying to find his place in the world or trying to find his place in this. Um, and at one point they're at a convention before the show and they're doing autograph signings, right? Yeah. And Wild Bill just shows up, he buys a ticket for the show and everybody's wanting to get pictures with him and everything. The girls are all smiling at him because of the video. In the previous episode and everything, the guys are all looking at him like he's just a local hero. Right. Um, and, I mean, you to hear how wild Bill is is one thing, but to see how the people gravitate to him, he would be pretty much like the Ric Flair or the Terry Funk, I should say, in this in this genre, in this yeah, organization. Yeah, just due to him being the bad guy at the time, Ric Flair was never really a baby face. He was... Mostly a hill, but everybody still gravitated towards him like they do towards Wild Bill. Yeah. So I got to say more Ric Flair than Terry Funk. Terry Funk because okay. Terry Funk, he never really stayed babyface or heel long. He kind of blurred the lines a lot with what yeah. he did. Yeah. So in the midst of all this, while he's giving out the autographs and stuff, the one of the bookers or one of the... What, uh, what are they the woman that is basically... Helping run the run the place pretty much the DWL arena or dome. She's been there since it all started with Tom and Wild Bill. They were the founders of the DWL because you've seen matches in the previous episode from the very beginning of it before they even had the dome when they were just outside and it was Wild Bill and Tom. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to say is is that anyways, so she helps with that, but she sees Wild Bill there, and she's instantly trying to get him to leave. He pretty much convinces her to stay. In the midst of all that, he... Um, uh, she basically says, don't do anything that's going to make us regret it. Yeah, so he does some uh, autographs. In the midst of this, though, he's telling Crystal that it's time for her to stand out. 
um, time for her to take her place. If she's really a star, all she has to do is let everybody see it. Yeah. And at one point he advises her to do something simple as putting her hair up. And she starts to do yeah. that before she goes in the ring that time. Yeah. Because she always had her hair down, but this time when she enters the ring, her hair is not up like in a ponytail, but it's pinned back up more. Yeah. Now, while we're talking about this, we, we go back to this other thing. Meanwhile, what you got is you got Ace acting like a little kid. And by a mean little kid is a snot-nosed brat punk. And he's jealous of Bobby because of what he has seen with how close they got in the previous episode. Something that's genuine between Bobby and Crystal that he doesn't have a Crystal because he's looking at her as a piece of meat. Pretty much, yeah. So that being said, they were going to run a skit where... Where Ace basically shows pictures of Crystal and Bobby making out and everything to prove that she was cheating on them. But Crystal goes off script, grabs the mic before he could do anything like that, and basically lets the audience know, hey, I cheated on you with Bobby because I needed a real man, not a crybaby. Yeah, not a crybaby. And by this time, the fans are like, oh my God, you just got swerved. Um, and, and it ticks Ace off because Ace was going to exploit her and have the fans pretty much dislike her but the way he was going to go about it was really un ungentlemanlike like he was going to call her trailer trash now mind you this fairgrounds thing is supposed to be family friendly he's going to call her trailer trash a worthless piece of i don't know what else but Garbage. yeah yeah that's a, a nice way of saying it and about it yeah like ace was just going beyond what was supposed to be scripted yeah he really was he was trying to push the envelope so the fact that she interfered and stepped up like she did made it more interesting than Ace just browbeating her. Um, with that being said, we go back and we see where the hype of the one scene. Now, I am jumping back and forth, um, but you also see where uh, the kid and the father, before this fairgrounds thing happened, where they're doing a... I guess what it is. Uh, lunch, dinner. Uh, lunch in, yeah, lunch like a in meeting. with the people that's over the fairgrounds. Yeah. And they're all saying what they are more specialized in and everything. None of them knows anything about professional wrestling. And what gets me is how the dad just told the son about how everything in wrestling is just a story. It's not all real. The dad's not really a bad guy. He just plays a bad guy. Or for people that knows about wrestling, plays a heel. But whenever the son hears that, he understands it. And w- once the people over the fairgrounds ask about it, the son actually talks and tells them about how it's just a story and everything. And that is what really piques their interest the most. It's how the son was ready to say all that without the dad having input on it. Tell, basically telling them what to say. It's almost like we're in a race on who's going to be able to tell all the story and none of us talk. But anyways, <laughs> um, that being said, so with that alluding to that, uh, then we'll go ahead and jump forward. So the match is getting ready to start. And as the match starts, Ace is not having it. Ace is being what you call strong arm or stiff armed. He's being very stiff. Yeah, to the point that Jack is going... You know, ease up, Ace, ease up. Like, he's going on. And uh, the only thing he actually tells Bobby is, uh, one of, well, he tells him two things. One is reversal, and then... The, the other is uh, climb the cage, and do a super, super super, Yeah, and then he's like, man, I've never done this before. He's like, don't be a wimp, um, uh, in layman's terms. And uh, they do it, and uh, Bobby sells it pretty good. Yeah, he really does. But the... Uh, but the thing that was kind of, go ahead, you tell this part. Ace though. basically puts him in what most people would know as a heel lock or a leg leg lock kind of. Now keep in mind while he's doing this, Bobby is tapping. Yeah, but Ace doesn't let go and ends up injuring Bobby for real. More than injures Bobby, he snaps his leg in two. Yeah, and you can see where the bone popping out of the, the leg. The bone doesn't pop out of the leg, but you see where it starts to. Push up against the skin. Yeah. Like it's about to come out. Yeah. 
And, I mean, truthfully, there was no reason for that at all. No. Um, and what happens when they make it to the hospital? This is where we're getting into where the story bleeds into the life. When and they make stuff. it to the hospital and everything, uh, Bobby's in surgery and all that. And Jack gives son some money to go and get some kind of candy or some yeah. kind of food, something like that. But Jack goes and sees Ace and basically Jack lets him have it. Like you shouldn't have done that. Ace basically says, I didn't know. I didn't mean to. Which was horse crap because when you watch the thing, you clearly see Ace like, like not you wanting to let go. You can see the rage go. in his eyes. Yeah, and he actually told... Uh, Jack actually told Ace to let go several, several times. Yes. And even Bobby was screaming at him saying, please stop. this is before the bomb pop. Yeah. So, at this point, Ace uh, stops Jack and says, Jack, Jack, Jack. And Jack has his brother Ace, has Jack has Ace's head pinned up against the soda machine. And his son sees his dad like that. And now his son doesn't know What's really going on? Is this them being in character? There's no crowd there, so how can they really be in character? How can this be kayfabe or storyline? This has to be real life. So the son really doesn't know what to make of it. Now keep in mind that uh, the son actually looks up to Ace uh, yeah. more so than he does his dad. So to see this was kind of like a what's going on. It's kind of like a slap in the face to yeah. the son, really. The only thing that I didn't like about this part was... They drop F bombs, G D and all this stuff in front yeah. of the kid, but because that kid saw that interaction between the two the two brothers, all of a sudden they're the worst piece of crap that ever lived in the face of the earth. I was like, whatever. Uh, that's why I was kinda like like whatever. That was you know, but they were like, Well forget about uh, But the woman that works with Jack, he she knew how much the boy looks up to Ace and everything. Yeah. So she kind of had the best of intentions with the way that she did that. I think she just didn't want to have to explain it. Yeah, she even told Jack whenever she was leaving, either talk to your son or I'm going to call your wife to her talk to him. Yep, and at that time he was like, hey, by the way, we got the fairground gig, and she's like, yeah, who cares, whatever. Like, basically the son's more important, which I agree with that, and Ginger's getting ready to make her debut. Again. Yep. We're thinking about giving her some some merch, too. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad. Yeah, I'm saying, like, I was giving merch. Come on, girl. I know you want up here. She's wanting up here. Come on. Just pet her. Come on. She's wanting up here. Come up here, girl. She's trying. She's stretching my, uh, yeah. getting my legs and getting my pants. Here she goes. Watch out for your drink. Yeah. Come on, Ginger. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there she goes. Come on, Ginger. Say hi to your audience. Um, if we have to, we'll get a gift or something, get a picture and do a cartoon thing with us three and then Ginger right in the middle of it, you know. Or even get her our own. That'd be cool. Yeah, that would be good. Um, her first name when we got her was, uh, well, before we got her, when my mom got her, her name was Bunny. Why? I guess because she hops around. My mom called her Ginger R, as in Ginger Rogers, who was known as a dancer and actress that danced. Because when she gets happy, she dances around. My sister calls her Chucky because she looks like the stitched face of Chucky. How my sister came up with that, I don't know. I don't know either. But with that being said, though, from a scale of one to five, what would you give this episode? Dude, I think this was the best episode thus far in the series. I concur. The only cons that I have about this episode is it wasn't longer. Yeah, I I completely agree. Um, They could have let this one go an hour and a half, two hours. And I would have actually been okay with that. Yeah. The only thing is, though, the next episode is going to bleed more into about, oh, crap, I know something we forgot to cover. What? Um, what was the guy's name? Rooster. Rooster. Rooster on this has actually had a chance while they were doing the Battle Royal for the number one contender um, to actually take it. And Yeah, but all the fans were chanting his name. and He decided not to. So... Once Diego won, Rooster got out of got thrown out of the ring and everything. Diego won. All the fans started throwing garbage towards Diego because they all enjoy Rooster. He comes back, 
behind the curtain and everything and Jack stops him and basically shows respect towards him and says I gotta deal with this tonight but tomorrow let me know anything I can do that will help alleviate some of this for you and I will be happy to do everything I can. One thing that Rooster does when he goes to the back, he'd uh, ask Jack what's his real name or what's his name. And he was like, basically, which one? Because you and get called several different names. Jack gave him his given name or what you would yeah. call his legal name or birth name, whatever you want to call it, his stage name, and the nicknames that he used for friends and nicknames that family uses for him. Yep. So Jack showed that it doesn't matter who you are. If you're in the company, you are family. Yeah, and it also showed, too, that as much as Rooster talks about wanting to be in the main event, he choked near the end when he could have had it. You could tell the pressure scared him because when he looked around and saw all those audience members eyeing him like that, yeah, he got nervous, like he got super nervous. nervous. He was about to throw Diego over the rope, had him on the ropes and everything, on the turnbuckle. About to dump him over, and Diego was like, "Go on, go on," and he just looks at, "No, no, I can't." And Diego kicked him off, and Rooster kind of like, I guess you say like a superhero pose, with knee, one knee on the ground, fist on the ground, everything. Oh yeah. And Diego just said, "You sure?" He did, yeah. Ran towards Diego. Diego up over the rope. Diego wins the match. So, to me, it showed that the fans are, are enjoying Rooster and that, honestly, Rooster is family with the DWL. And they're teasing for the next episode of Rooster thinking about leaving the DWL, but I really don't know what to think about this. I don't think Rooster's going to leave. I think it's just showing that somebody's going to get in his head. And what the next episode's going to end up leading to is somebody's going to get in his head, like that guy that showed in the preview, and it's going to end up causing an all-out argument between him and Jack. Yeah, but I think Jack's going to try to treat him right, and he's going to realize that Jack is doing the right thing by him. I'm interested on what's what's going to happen with Bobby, because we know Bobby's injured. He's going to come back. Crystal feels bad about it. I'm wondering if, if something's going to happen to Ace before that ladder match show. And you're going to end up having Bobby or Rooster go into that ladder match. True, true. Which is what makes me wonder about it. Because it's going to be Ace, Jack, and Wild Bill. And basically a triple threat ladder match. And the way I'm thinking is it's going to end up being where Crystal ends up doing something. Or Bobby ends up getting their attention. That would end up making Ace lose or Jack not pay attention or something. And I honestly think Wild Bill's going to end up winning the title. In my mind, just to make him a baby face to the fans. To where they're going to have a good baby face for him to wrestle against. And that is how they're going to end up building Rooster up. That's my mind. I don't know so much about Bobby interfering because they kind of make it kind of clear in the previews, which you're right, they could do thing where he gets Bobby better. Bobby could be at ringside or something. Right. I don't think it's going to be more. I, I'm thinking more detrimental than that. I'm thinking before the match, either Ace gets attacked, Bobby gets blamed, something's going to happen and Bobby's going to be innocent on it. Um, and I honestly could see it probably being Rooster being the one to do the damage. Yeah, I could too. Um, or somebody. But I would say probably look to see on the next episode maybe a hint or a guest appearance from a indie wrestler probably that will notice. Yeah. But um, anything else you'd like to add though to this? Um, one of the things you'd like to see them do on this episode, on this future episodes, or well, what I'm thinking is that they're going to end up having a triple threat ladder match at the fairgrounds for the state fair and everything, which I think will be some that'd be good to have a match for the title there, but. I would like to see if they end up having that match. You end up having Rooster as the number one contender for whoever ends up winning the match. Hmm. I would like to see that. I don't know if it's going to happen. It's a good guess, but Rooster didn't win the Royal Rumble. It was the other guy. But he could end up facing him in a one-on-one -on -one match for that number one spot. I don't see the ladder match. Honestly, I don't see the ladder match actually happening as planned. 
only for the simple fact that you got Bobby that's going to be ticked off. Even though Bobby's been passive, I think you're going to start seeing Bobby become more and more aggressive. And then kind of, I think they're going to end up making the, I don't know how to say it. Like they're going to bring the. Uh, I think Bobby's going to end up being kind of like how Stone Cold was with the attitude there, where Bobby's a good guy, but he's. Get, I'm talking about real life. I'm talking about yeah, real life. Yeah, that's what I'm talking blend. about. Stone Cold was Stone Cold in real life. It was just turned up for the fans. And I think that's what they're going to end up making where Bobby ends up doing. The way he is normally, he's just going to crank that up more. He's a good guy, he's, and he's trying to get revenge, but he's trying to do it the right way. I don't think so. I think Bobby's about to get framed. I think something's about to happen to where either where Bobby gets framed. Either way it goes, Ace is about to get the screw job. Yeah. He, because he, Ace did something intentional, and every time he does something like that, something comes and bites him in the butt every time. Yeah. Um. Now, the new valet girl that, uh, that he got with, uh, and stuff, honestly, that he met at the bar, which was on episode four. I mean, she's okay, but clearly she was used to stir crap, pretty much. She was basically used to push Crystal out the door. Yeah. And honestly, like, I don't know. It, it, it makes no sense. Like, Ace, it's okay for Ace to sleep around with other women, which most guys act like this anyways. It's okay for them to mess around on other women, but that woman better not do it to him. And at the time, Crystal wasn't even sleeping with him, wasn't sleeping with Bobby, wasn't doing anything other than just being a good supportive friend. Well, but I see what you're but saying. But Ace didn't see it that way. I see what you're saying um, on that. Ace but, saw uh, as they were getting close. Okay, I see you're interrupting. But what I'm saying is, is that the thing that Ace saw between them two was the fact that they had a connection. Mm-hmm. Ace had to. Ace didn't have that connection with Crystal, and it was semi-forced. Like all he used her was for a play toy, right? Yeah, pretty much. So it's kind of like if you see, like for example, you see me talking to someone, or you're talking to someone, because I'm your friend, I can see, hey, wow, they got chemistry going on. Whereas like the me person, and my first wife, I didn't and, see your first wife. Yeah, you know my first wife. J.J. Matthews' mom. Okay, we're going to bring that on air? This is just a run for anyway. But... The hell it is. Welcome to the dog pound. <laughs> but anyway, it's kind of like with my kid's mom. I didn't see it because I was involved in it. That she basically was just trying to use me and everything. Where you did, my parents did. But I was in the circle, so I couldn't see it. Everybody else was outside. They could see it. And when you're with someone in that circle, nine times out of ten, you're not going to see it. Yeah. But case in point, what we're trying to say is, long and short and skinny of it is, Ace saw a true relationship forming between Bobby and Crystal. And it was something that he couldn't have because all he looked at her for was uh, was sex. And all she and she actually liked Ace. Like, she really, really liked Ace. Yeah, she really did. And he pretty much ran her through the mud. And now he's got another gopher to go to. I'm hoping that this starts something with... Where Crystal can be involved yes, in the ring. Yes, female wrestling. But I'm thinking, I, I don't know how that's going to happen. I don't know either. I tell you what would be a big swerve is if that girl, that valet girl, not Crystal, it ends up being the one that injures Ace. Something's going to go awry on that ladder match. I honestly think either the ladder match is going to start and it be normal and then that girl's going to end up trying to help Ace but ends up hurting him where he ends up losing or Ace is going to end up doing something to piss somebody off and get attacked before the match. And if that happens, technically the number one contender is supposed to be Diego, but Diego could step aside and let Rooster at it because Rooster is his friend. I honestly think we're going to see a thing of Wild Bill being an a-hole getting into the valet's ear. And, like he already has with Crystal. Yep, and I see her uh, either doing something, and I see probably Ace walking in. I wouldn't be surprised on Wild Bill and her doing something. I wouldn't be surprised at that either. Well, guys, if you got opinions and questions, leave them down below. Um, I want to thank Tojo for stopping by and us. Uh, just tell us what you think about our new setup. Me and Tojo are trying to get things going. Hopefully, we can try to get things going at different places. But as of right now, 
we're, we're taking it as we go. Um, but let us know. Um, and hopefully what we can do is sometime on day off or something, try to get a hold of Big Bus, have him back here uh, to where we can actually almost do like a late night type thing, like where one of us talks to him and yeah. then the other one gets up and then vice versa. But uh, yeah, so if you like what you see here, be sure to rate, comment, subscribe. And as always, break every chain. God bless you guys. Y'all have a good night.